Hi, this is the Philosophical Angle Program, and I'm your host, Chris Angle. I'm the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Philosophical Equations of Economics. And these books are available free for viewing at thephilosophicalangle.com. If you'd like to uh, comment or make a suggestion or give us a, uh, give us a shout, uh, uh, put it in the comment boxes below and hit that like button and sh be sure to subscribe if uh, if you like the uh, if you like our, our our broadcast series, and um, <clears throat> the purpose of the philosophical angle is to uh, examine the nature of concepts and ideas in current media, and uh, one of the things that kind of popped out uh, at us the other day was uh, AOC's uh, dramatic portrayal of. What uh, what happened the other day on January 6th and how it was traumatic to her, and everybody in the news has suddenly discovered that uh, it wasn't true at all. Um, her being far away from uh, from the scene of the action, so we want to ask ourselves, uh, why why uh, why did she do this? What um, what motivated her to uh, to make up this tall tale uh, and? and uh, delve into hyperbole and uh, uh, it's kind of uh, inconceivable why, why why do all of that uh, why make up the whole thing why make why make it a, a charade well you have to look into the difference between the left and the right and if we explore that it's going to come out why the left and members of the left would do such antics. Okay, let's do it. Let's, we're first going to bring up a graph, a little chart, of the difference between the, uh, the left and the right. And the first thing we need to explore are the five political behavior principles of, uh, of politics. And dictum one is the law of demand for the good. All life demands that which is good for it. Dictum two. This is St. Augustine's principle of libido dominandi, which is that humans have the will to dominate. And domination is a, a natural outgrowth of our, of our behavior. Dictum three. The have-nots are inherently not good. We'll explain this later. Dictum four. Noblesse oblige. We'll, we'll get into this a little bit later. <clears throat> Dictum five. The Lord act in principle that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. We'll get into that a little bit later too. But the basic difference, uh, we're going to start with the have-nots. The have-nots are the well, first of all, we, even before that, we have to explain that society has evolved uh, from the first division, behavioral division, inside all of society, which is that the, the haves come about, and that comes about because the law of the demand for the good, all humans want that which is good for them, and the principle of libido dominandi that uh, uh, those who will dominate will come to the top and they will dominate the have-nots. And the have-nots are the workers, the serfs, the proletariats, the slaves, and the haves are the kings and queens of society and, and they're nobles. And uh, <clears throat> the have-nots, uh, all they do is seek the first victim of life. They just want that which is good for them. And uh, uh, they strive uh, to... Uh, uh, in society to seek that which is good for it and and uh, and, uh, and and as a result they seek equality before the law and in their pursuance of in their pursuing the first dictum of life they strive for life liberty and happiness okay so the the left are the haves they are the king the queens the nobles and the nobles uh, have uh, their associates, which are facilitators. And examples, in modern day examples of these facilitators are the uh, the government bureaucrats and the corporate management. Corporate management uh, uh, 
uh, is needed and they're brought into the fold of, uh, of the facilitators because beneath them are all the people that pay tribute to the kings, queens, and nobles. And those are the taxpayers, uh, which are employed at the big corporations. And, uh, and the haves want to be controlling of this situation because uh, they believe that the nature of the serfs and, uh, and, the, and uh, uh, the proletariat is that their nature is inherently bad. The serfs are inherently bad. And some of the left believe that the have-nots, that is the serfs, are bad because they're, first of all, either just not of the social class of the haves, or that uh, uh, they're believing uh, that they are born this way and they're born with an inherently bad nature. And these facilitators uh, control the have-nots uh, through both um, motivation and through negative knowledge and plus force. And when I say motivation, an example of that is uh, welfare, giving money and free goods and in exchange for the, their vote and loyalty, which is, uh, which is happening right now uh, through the, uh, uh, the, the, the most current bill will say, uh, okay, we're going to give everybody $1,000 or $2,000, whatever, whatever it is. And uh, they, have, uh, they also give welfare funds in exchange for the vote and loyalty uh, to the party. And uh, they also control through negative knowledge plus force, which is because control equals negative negative knowledge plus force. And so they want to control the the, the serfs proletariat naturally, because they can take uh, the goodness that they provide and bring it to themselves, which fulfills dictum number one. And uh, the haves will think that they are. Uh, 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 that they must provide for the have-nots to a certain extent. So after a few revolutions a couple hundred years ago, notably the French Revolution, the haves have realized that they can't denigrate, they can't oppress the society too far. If they do so, they will rise up and heads will roll. And so from this was born the concept of noblesse oblige, that the nobles of society must provide at least a basic existence. And so you see this, especially in societies of the communists and the fascists and the socialists uh, and the, the kings and queens of, of old, they, they say in their creed that they have to provide a certain level of subsistence, of, of uh, to be able for the serfs and the proletariat to live. Otherwise, it's a big problem. So the control of the have-nots, but the problem is that the control of the have-nots tend to get uh, uh, worse and more oppressive over time, and that's because of the of, uh, dictum number five, the Lord Acton principle. Uh, uh, if we remember uh, that power corrupts and and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And, and the reason for this is that after a while, the haves realize that they don't need to cooperate with the, ha the have-nots. They control the have-nots entirely. And so sometimes they forget about noblesse oblige, and the oppression becomes uh, too, terribly, uh, uh, too terrible. And, and the reason why uh, uh, the Lord Acton principle uh, pervades here is because they don't have to cooperate and cooperate uh, when you don't have to cooperate you uh, lose respect the two are are, are uh, tied together the purpose of respect is to enable the human species to cooperate and you can see that in other species also respect allows us to cooperate uh, so uh, now there are some in those uh, uh, the serfs uh, in the worker bees and the slaves, uh, they want to break out. Sometimes uh, they're, they don't want to be in this oppressed class when everything is taken away from them uh, and uh, given to the, to the haves. They want to break out. And so the middle class is born and they, uh, they invent things and they, uh, they break out and they get to the next level. And the haves 
they tolerate this to a certain extent because uh, they found they find that these these people can pay greater taxes. So as long as they don't jump into the facilitator class, it's tolerated. But there's no respect for the individual rights of these have-nots, whether the middle class or the, the, the lower class. Uh, they and, and Because in the eyes of the haves, they are inherently bad people. And they need to be controlled. And they are controlled. And so this necessary control of the have-nots means that there will be economic and equal social justice of the have-nots whereby everybody stays where they are in society, whereby everybody is equal in every way. And they do this because the have-nots are inherently bad, and therefore there's really no empathy for the individual rights of the have-nots because they're inherently bad. And they even come up with names for the have-nots, such as deplorables when that's what we're known today as, as deplorables. And this is part of the haves caste system, whether you call it a fascist caste system or a socialist caste system. It's a caste system. So, so let's get back to why did AOC portray victimhood in her little charade the other day. Well, it's because the haves jumped out. I'm sorry, the have not jumped out of their category and went up into the facilitators. And they did this because they they uh, got past the front door of the Capitol building and they walked in and all of a sudden it they were literally in control of the Capitol building. And so for a temporary millisecond, for a small bit of time, they became the haves. And this is unforgivable to the kings and queens of society, to the nobles, to the, to the officers, to the facilitators, to the government bureaucrats. This is not sustainable. This is a sin. And so, at the same time, as these have-nots jump into the facilitator, temporarily, into the facilitator class, into the government bureaucrat class, AOC herself, during those moments, drops down into the, into the, uh, the lower class, the deplorable class, because now... As, uh, as you know, and actually, and uh, Dr. Steve Turley pointed this out the other day, the actually, the oppressed jump up and the oppressors are now topsy-turvy. And uh, uh, it was a good insight by him. And, and it's actually true. Uh, they, uh, they uh, so that's why uh, she has to make this charade because she's, the, uh, the operation has actually become inverted. And, and also, noblesse oblige, principle number four, has been violated. The bureaucrats have given the have-nots a basic lifestyle, and they have portrayed principle number four by coming up and inverting this situation. So the uh, principle four has been violated. And uh, so that's why she had to make her little charade. So thanks for watching. Hit that like button and come back to see us again.